Hey, welcome or welcome back to 4F Beauty. Sing it if you know it. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. Right, hopefully you're watching me in black and white because hopefully editing Angie has remembered to do that. Because this is another in my series of photo inspiration collaborations. Uh, this is this is proving to be a very, very popular series. Um, I normally do three uploads a week and it's looking like I might have to sneak a couple of extras in because I've got so many collabs planned that all of my um, reviews of palettes and stuff is running way behind at the moment. <laughs> I really need to catch up and uh, get some things uploaded, really. Would you mind if I appeared in your newsfeed more than three times a week just for a little while while I catch up? Would you? Would you mind? Mm. Anyway, I am absolutely delighted that today is a new collabie in this series. It is the ever-beautiful Anne. And not only is she fabulous over 40, she's fabulous over 50, and indeed, according to her opening titles, 60. Can you believe this woman is 60? Because, uh, no, I'm sorry. Am I, I, I going to have to see a driving licence to believe that? But, this is a collaboration between the two of us. So, if you want to know exactly which photo we've used and how this looks in glorious Technicolor, my friend, you are in precisely the right place. Grab a drink, grab a snack, sit back and enjoy. Hey, welcome back from the intro. I feel kind of slightly slanted today. I think it's my... Oh, I don't know. Anyway, hello. As you can see, I'm now back in glorious Technicolor because hopefully I've remembered to do the first bit in black and white again. Because this is another one of my photo inspiration collaboration series. And this time I'm collabing with somebody new to the channel. I'm collabing with Anne. Uh, I'll put a picture over here somewhere. Uh, she's a lovely woman. She's 60 plus according to her channel. She's literally just shaved the sides of her head and got a really wafty, fluffy bit here, which I absolutely love. Um, and she's been doing quite a few pride looks um, because, as she said, she's part of the LGBTQIA plus community and so is her husband. And uh, apparently the only person in their family who isn't is one of their kids who hasn't decided what he is yet, so fair enough. Love that. Absolutely love that. Um, she actually approached me and said um, she'd left a comment on one of my films saying, love this series, please keep it going. And I said, look, so long as people want to collab with me, I'll keep going. As you can see, because I've done like rounds three and four with some people. Um, because let's face it, there's plenty of photos out there to give us inspiration. Uh, the next thing I know, I get a message from her going, uh, do you fancy clapping with me then? I'm like, oh my god, yes. Because I'm still a little bit mm, about asking people to collab after I got slapped down so resoundly by a certain YouTuber whose name shall remain unmentioned on my channel. But... Uh, Thanks to her, we have created the Beaches of Eastwick. You'll have to go back a couple of photo inspiration films to find out what that's all about. Anyway, this particular one, um, I sent Anne a photo, which I'll put up here, which a friend of mine, Maz, took when she was on a cruise in Norway. And I just think that that is stunning. Now, obviously, I've just looked at fresh air. Uh, I actually have it on my phone here and I've zoomed in on it uh, because obviously you've got the bright white of the sun 
you've got the bluey lilac sky. The snow on the top of those mountains looks a beautiful baby pink. Coming down into a more dusky lilac-y lavender. And then you get the really deep grey at the bottom, almost black. Um, and I just, I, I really like that. that. The mixture of going from the palest of pale through to the deepest of deep, I absolutely adore. So I've grabbed uh, three different palettes. I've got, obviously I've got my pastel dream with a vision because at the moment this is the only pastel palette I've got. Um, but my Blush Tribe pastel palette should be coming out soon. But I'm probably going to use this one for the lilac and the lavender. Possibly this blue down here. Haven't decided this one here. Haven't decided yet. Possibly. I've got my. You know I love my Revolution Reloaded's. Come on, open up, damn you. There we are. The old four pound palettes, which are awesome. Uh, I'm going to use this one for the greys because I've got this one here and this one over here. Uh, and I've also got a nice sort of shimmery yellowy white there I could use. And I'm grabbing the Riviera Kid. Trum. Name of program, folks. Uh, because I really like gentle, 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 gentle. This white here is one of the best, most pigmented whites I have ever used. Stunning. Um, but I'm also liking uh, Monte Carlo and Coastline because if I mix those two together, that's Monte Carlo. No, that's Monte Carlo. That's Coastline. Because if I mix the two together it gives a really beautiful soft like orangey pink so I'm probably going to use that between the pink and the lavender I've also if I decide to do it there's the gorgeous Mediterranean shade which is the shimmery lilac so I have options with the Riviera palette but obviously the majority of it is going to be the pastel palette because it's a mainly pastel photo so while I wipe these swatches off the back of my hand before I get them everywhere I'll just explain to people who are new to my channel uh, especially if you've come here from Anne's channel hi welcome hope you enjoy it here um, if you've not seen any of my photo inspiration series before, basically one photo inspires two people to do a different look. And it just shows how different people look at different photos, look, can look at the same photo and be drawn to different parts of that photo. And if you ask them to recreate it in an eye look, so far, I think this is either 16th or the 17th episode that I'm doing, possibly, I think it's the 16th, I think it's the 16th, I've kind of lost count to be honest. Um, so far, every single look that I've done, including a triple look with the Bitches of Eastwick, they've all been different. None of the looks have been the same, yet I have a Hand of the King badge, because, um, my husband's my king and I'm his queen, so I got him one of these as well. But he's at work, so obviously he can't wear that at work. But I just, I, it looks kind of cute. Anyway, uh, distraction. I do get distracted quite quickly. I have chronic pain, so I get mind fogs. And when I get a mind fog, my mouth just works by itself. And who knows what comes out, to be quite honest. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so that's, that's basically it. The only rules are, you can only use colours in the picture you cannot so for example I couldn't suddenly pull in a green or a brown because there's no greens or browns in uh, that particular picture now obviously <clears throat> depending on the monitor you're looking at it on 
that pink could be a pale pink, it could be a salmon pink, um, or it could be a bluey pink or a lilac -y pink. So pink is kind of, you've got pink, you've got lilac, you've got lavender, you've got white, you've got blue, you've got grey. Basically that's the only colours you can use. You can use any shades within that, depending on what you see when you look at the picture, but you can't add colours in. But you don't have to use every single shade. So if you decide, I want to do an all pastel look, I don't want to include that grey, that's absolutely fine. You don't have to. You only have to make sure that when, I mean, you could, if you wanted, just use one of those colours and do an amazing blown out smoky eye. You know, pastel smoky eye, just one of those colours, if that's what you're drawn to. So it's really interesting to see what different people are called to in the same picture. Right, let's get you zoomed in. Um, as I said, I've got chronic pain, so that combined with the fact that I like my channel to be accessible to all skill levels means that I do tend to blend slower than most people, uh, partly because of my chronic pain, partly because I want beginners to be able to keep up with me. Um, so if I'm going too slowly for you, uh, there is a speed widget, please feel free to use it, I will not be offended. Right. Face, oh, no, I've got it a little bit too tight. Let's, yeah, I need to sink it back out just a fraction. That's better, I can see both my eyes now. Um, face is washed, moisturised, SPF'd, and primed, including my anti perspirant primer, details of which are listed in the description box below. There's a film where I explain it. I think I need to. Sorry about this, I'm having issues, folks. There you go. I think I need to get to treat myself to a new um, tripod because this one started to look a bit wafty. Anyway. On my eyes, I've got Mac Soft Ochre Paint Pot, which I have not set, but I've been waffling long enough that to touch, it doesn't feel tacky anymore. But because I've not set it, it will grab pigment that you put down. So you can't just go straight in and swipe, you need a different technique. Now, I've got what's known as deep set or double lidded eyes. A lot of people confuse that with having hooded lids, so I just want to quickly explain the difference for you. When I look straight ahead, with my brows relaxed, you can see all of my mobile eyelid. Some of it might be narrower than others, but you can still see all of it all the way across. So I don't have hooded lids. Hooded lids is where your static lid completely covers right down to the lash line your mobile lid when your eyes are open. And that can be part of it all the way along. And So you've either got a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. Now, as I said, I've got deep set eyes. Um, some people call them double lids. I'm just going to show you what that means. If I cover my mobile lid this side and oh, close my eye, you can see I've got as much lid space again that tucks back in. Likewise, if I cover my static lid and close my eye, I've got about half that space again on the, on the static lid. So I do have the same issues that people with hooded lids have where I get, I can't just um, cut my crease by following my, my socket line, you know, I have to cut my crease up onto my upper lid. I get transfer of shimmers from the bottom lid to the top lid. And even when I use glitter glues, I always get a bare strip right across the middle. Okay, so I totally understand. So all of my um, tutorials, all of my films are hooded eye friendly. If you have got a completely hooded lid, if you get a brush like this or a pencil brush and with your brows relaxed and your eyes open just sketch a line across following the shape of your eye so that you create a mobile lid on your static lid. Um, I always put a deeper shadow through my crease so you would put that along the line you've just made because anything dark recedes, so it gives the impression that that part of the eye is going back if you have had to create one. And whatever size brush I'm using, because obviously it's going to reduce the space between your crease and your brow, just use a slightly smaller brush. Okay? 
think I've covered everything now. I'm going to dive into some colour. Um, and I'm going to start off with, I think, Daydream. Now, some of these are pressed. Yeah, this is one of the. This is actually a pressed pigment. So, even if I had set my lids, I would have to use this in the way that I'm about to show you. So, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pat and tap and gently move the brush as I'm patting and tapping. Now in my viewfinder at the moment that looks white but I can assure you it's a very 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 pale pink. So I'm going to take that sort of about two thirds of the way along so to the outer edge of the coloured part of my lid, my eye rather, my lid, good lord, got lids on my brain. And that has now effectively set that shade. So I'm just going to do some very, very light buffing just to get rid of any loose pigment and to gently soften the edge. But I don't want to move too much of the pigment away because I don't want to lose the depth of colour. If you do find that blending it takes the pigment away, just go back in with pigment on your brush and just very, very lightly tap to tap it into place. Now this side, this is the eye I'm blinding. I got it got pulled around a lot when I was five years old at the ophthalmic. I've got super super deep creasing here, so I do sometimes have to physically stretch my lid out, um, but I don't do that unless I absolutely have to. So I'm going to do the same thing with this side. Pat, and of course it's easier with this side because I can close it, which makes life so much easier. Um, I'm slipping into tutorial mode again, aren't I? I do this sometimes. I don't normally go as in-depth with the... Uh, there, that's what I wanted to show you, at the creasing. I don't normally go as in-depth when I'm doing the photo collab because it's not really a tutorial. It's more uh, how I'm recreating the picture rather than um, how I'm physically using the brushes etc but uh, yeah so I've been following Anne for getting on for a year now I'd say and I've always enjoyed her content when she first started off um, she was using the free version of Filmora um, that's an editing software and it used to leave like a stripe all the way across her videos but she's now got um, the paid for version where you don't get that so if you do catch one of her earlier ones and see that stripe don't panic the later videos don't have it um, she's got a wicked sense of humour and she produces some really really amazing looks um, I'm just sitting back to check the shapes of the same because obviously unless you're James Charles and you photoshop them your eyes are not symmetrical. I'm just taking the colour off of the brush. I've got a microfiber cloth down here that I use. And I'm going to go into Clarity, which is another pressed pigment. How's your day been? Has it been a good one? Or are you at the start of your day? <laughs> see on camera, you can't see a difference between those two. But in real life you can. So I'm really hoping that when I'm editing this, it does look like two different colours. Otherwise, I'm going to be mighty annoyed. I just want to prove to you They are different colours. That's what I'm putting on now. That's what I put on first. Mm. It's looking a little bit more blue as I'm building it up. I think I might add a little bit of extra blue into it. I might dip into... Um, 
I'll put this down first and then I think I'll dip into some of the blues in the um, deep dive palette from Revolution and maybe pick up some of the pinks from Riviera because with these lighter bases underneath hopefully it will still keep it nice and pastel I mean, you can see what I'm doing. I'm literally just tapping it into place. I'm slowly building the colour up, even though it just looks like I've used a cream eyeshadow all the way across. Fabulous. See, this is what happens when you've um, got over 40. You suddenly get creases in your eyes like that. That's why I normally do circular movements when I'm blending. But when I'm using pigments, I still do circles, but I tap. I just make sure you don't get any striping like I got over there. Right, let's clean the colours off of this. Let's um, let's pop into Riviera. And I'm just going to pick up a little bit of Monte Carlo, I think. And just very lightly. Started off tapping, and then I remembered that by putting that first colour on, I've actually set my base, so I can just gently buff this on over the top. You see, I leave things like this in my films. I don't just restart them because half of the thing about learning how to put makeup on is learning what to do if it doesn't go quite right the first time. This is the beauty of makeup though. Because if you don't like the look that you've done, you can adjust it or you can take it off and start again and nobody will ever know unless you've done it on camera like I have so you can see I'm just really very lightly buffing this pink circular movements circling towards the nose as I come in and away from the nose as I go back out again just to spread that pink yeah that looks more pink and now this side looks more blue than it did Marvellous. Again, I'm just making sure both shapes are the same. Yep. And I'm going to grab the Deep Dive palette from Revolution. Now these don't have names, unfortunately. But I'm going to go in with this blue here, which is uh, shade number three. And I'm going to pick some of that up and then very lightly swirl that over the top. the backwards and forwards buffing. I do have an issue on this corner here because I do have quite deep creasing there and there as well. I, I very often struggle to get pigment to to look good in those areas. I have to negotiate with it. Which basically means buff it until it looks how I want it to. So again Just going to pat that pigment on and give it a bit of a blend. Yes, I know I've not melded the two together yet. There's a reason for that. Sorry about that. My memory card filled up. That was helpful. Right. I have no idea at which point it cut out. So, as I was saying, um, I struggle here and here to get 
pigment to go on and not look patchy but I think I've managed to achieve the look I was wanting I can need perhaps a little tad more blue over this side at the moment as you can see I've not blended the two colours together and that's fine if you wanted to do an editorial look you absolutely can do but I'm going to be blending them together in just a moment so you'll see how I do that imminently brush by the way it's, it's a it's a non-branded one I got it from AliExpress ages ago it's just a really nice fluffy blending brush going back into the dream with a vision palette and I'm gonna go into aspiration but I'm gonna go in very very lightly because it is a pressed pigment so though I've picked some up, I'm actually going to pat it off on the back of my hand a little bit. Because I'm just going to do little circular movements between the blue and the pink. Just to blend the two together, because obviously pink and blue will make lilac. I'm going to pat a bit of this lilac on. Like that. And do the same this side. Because I'm a beginner friendly channel, I do all of my blending in real time. Which is why I said if you need to speed me up, you can do. But it does give you a good indication how long it will actually take, especially if you are a beginner, to do the look. You can see I'm doing circles one way and then circles the other, just up and down where the two colours meet. And then just very, very lightly, just tapping a little bit of that lavender on, just to finish off with, so you get a little bit of depth of colour where the two meet. This is probably one of the girliest looks I have ever done. I'm usually way more into bright colours, but sometimes it's nice to kind of... I mean, this is absolutely testing my boundaries, because I'm used to doing really, really bright, powerful colours. I'm absolutely not used to doing looks like this at all. Right, I'm going to go back into the um, Deep Dive palette and I'm going to go into Shadow 13 which is this grey green on the bottom and I might add a little bit of this darker number 15 afterwards but initially I'm going in, this is a Morphe M562 brush it's clean, it's just stained waiting for a deep clean. So I'm going to pick up some of that pigment, tap off so I don't get too much of it falling down onto my face, even though I haven't done my base yet. I'm going to very lightly just buff that through my crease. Now obviously this is the point where if you've moved your crease up, you follow that line that you've created. Right, because it does make it look as if the eye is receding backwards. So it's a great way of fooling the eye, kind of trompe l'oeil sort of thing. And then very, very tiny, 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 as small as you can make them circles. All the way along that line. And same thing back again, but reversing the direction. Because we're not wanting to go up the eye. I don't want to cover up all this beautiful pastel that I've just done. I just want to soften that line 
maybe thicken this outer edge up slightly so that it's sort of just it's just visible here because I've been struggling um, with fibro I do struggle with let me see fall out so um, I do struggle with particularly runny eyes it's one of the symptoms that I get from fibro add that to the fact that my hay fever is currently off the chart means that trying to do winged liner at the moment is a joke <laughs> to be quite honest it's just there's no point um, so what I'm trying to do is use my eyeshadows instead to give the same illusion which is why I tend to carry the darker colour just up and out I'm just sort of as I would normally do the outer third of the mobile lid, just whacking that grey on. This is the only problem with this particular brush, even when you tap off you will find you get a lot of fallout with it because it's so loose and so fluffy but it is great for doing crease work as you can see and you can always go in with a pad with micellar water on once you're finished and just tidy up and you can see that doing the shadow like that gives you the illusion of the eye coming out and up in the same way that a wing does so it is a great way if you can't wear liner for whatever reason it's a really great way of faking it but giving yourself the same um, impression or illusion so again, same thing, backwards and forwards, windscreen wiper in through my crease. And I'm just going to check this side. Yeah, well that's striping. So, as I said, normally most people doing circular movements would be like this side, you don't get striping. Um, so try the circular movements first. I just know that when I, when I do the windscreen wiper, if I get creasing there, I know that the circular movements aren't going to work for me. So I have to stretch my lid out. But as I said, do not do that if you don't have to. You will be in trouble. So again, just tiny circular movements. Just softening that line as it goes along. And then again, I just want to have it visible. This is why I sit back and just make sure the shapes are about the same. And then come back in and just tidy it up a little bit. And obviously out a third of the lid because I'm going to go in, I'm not cutting my lid today because I want a more softer finish but I'm going to go in with I think a couple of the shimmers from the Riviera palette This is a beautifully soft, charcoaly grey in this one. Very often, um, greys can pull either blue or... Um, they, they can be too dark, you know? Whereas this, to me, is the absolute perfect shade that I've been looking for, for the look for today. Just clean that brush off on the... Uh, microfiber cloth I've got in front of me and then I'm going to get this is from the Ranimal or Animal brush set I mention it one of the AliExpress ones Express? I've got all Sean Connery on you the AliExpress ones um, which are linked in my description box as my favourite brush films uh, this is number 
medium shader brush too. Right, so I'm going to come into this and I'm going to pick up I'm going to pick up a little bit of sails, which is that pure white, which is not a shimmer. Just going to grab myself a little mirror so I can see close-up detail here. I'm just going to pop this. You can see what I mean about how beautifully pigmented this white is. It's probably the best white I've used, to be quite honest. I'm just going to pop that right in a third, like so, and obviously do the same this side, but with this one I kind of need to mark where I need the white to finish and then stretch out because uh, if I don't do this I end up with pigment kind of either collecting in the creases um, loose without being blended or skimming across the top and then as I move my eye during the day I end up with multicoloured freckles created as, as I get full out which if I was looking for a multicoloured freckle look would be amazing uh, but as I'm not I kind of have to stretch the lid out a little bit Obviously this eye is more difficult because I can't actually close the eye, otherwise not a lot of makeup happens. Just want to get a little bit more brightness this side. And bearing in mind this is going on dry, this is not a wet brush. You can of course wet it if you want to. But there's really no need with this white. It's it's pigmented enough that you don't need to. Just clean that off. And I'm going to go into Seaside. Which is like a taupey shade. Which I think will work nicely. As the... The sort of blend between the white and the, the uh, charcoal. And again, I'm putting this on dry. Mm. I'm just gently buffing. Might try wetting it actually. Let me grab her. I've got a Revolution fixing spray. This is the vanilla and coconut. Not that it really matters. Never put a wet brush into a pressed shadow. Always pick up the shadow on a dry brush, then wet the brush. I always dry the ferrule off as well to make sure there's no moisture going to go down and loosen the glue. I'm just going to, you can see the difference that makes applying that shimmer wet. You could of course apply it with uh, your fingers if you wanted to. Uh, I don't particularly want to poke my eyes out, thanks. So again, just a, a nice little soft transition between the two. And now I'm going to dry this brush off on the microfiber cloth before I go back in and pick up more pigment from Seaside for t'other eye. Really beautiful sort of taupey silver. So it's quite a quite a warm silver because silvers can be quite cold colours. But this is actually quite a warm toned silver. So it blends really nicely for the look that I wanted. Right. Okay. Happy with that so far. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to pause you while I go and put some foundation on and brows and face stuff and I'll be back to finish off this eye look see you right now and I am back okay I'm gonna grab my Nikki tutorials Ofra glazed donut and I'm gonna get a really really tiny brush this is a uh, Studio 5 pencil brush and I'm just going to apply the tiniest little bit right on the inner corner of that white Just so it has a little bit of shine and it's not completely flat but it's still not a in your face highlight okay little trick I like to do right grabbing my little flat top brush no that's not the palette I want I'm going to start off with the Deep Dive palette and I'm going to go into shade 13 again and just dip the very tip of the bristles and then tap off well. And what I'm going to do is just go right up tight under my lash line with this darker colour and then make sure I link it up to the outside edge and this is where you can really straighten that line just on the outside edge and that really helps to give you the cat eye look without having to use eyeliner so if like me you are struggling at the moment try this trick and you can do it with any dark colour so long as you link it on the outer edge and just do a nice straight line up to where you would normally finish your wing and it gives you the cat eye shape without having to worry about fluff in my eye um, eyeliner clean that brush off and then my favourite brush for smudging out the under eye is this one. It was actually the brush that came in the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette, the Swamp Queen one. Love this because it's flat top but it's really stubby and chunky. But it's not too tightly packed. So you do get a good bit of movement when you're blending out an under eye. And I'm going to go in with, I think, Aspiration, which is the lavender that I used to blend between the pink and the blue up here. I'm just going to use that to very gently buff out and soften the lower lash line. This again is a pressed pigment. But obviously because I've got powder under my eyes at the moment, setting my concealer, it works absolutely fine over the top. Yes, I'm flinching this side, I always do. Being blind in this eye, obviously I don't have any peripheral vision, so the number of times I poke myself in the eye, lost count. I like that. And then to finish off, I think I'm actually going to use that glazed donut again because it's such a beautifully bright picture. I want a beautifully bright highlight. This is a cheap lip brush that I bought off of eBay years ago. I think this brush is about 12 years old now. 
but it's still doing its job. It's been washed many, many times, and I think it cost me something like 50p when I first bought it. So, we're going to pop some of this right up under the brow bone, and I'm going to gently soften that with my finger slightly because it's the uh, snow-topped mountains, dear. With a bit of morning haze on them. Nice. And then pop a little bit on my tear duct and with my eye shape I found that it's really nice to bring it down under the tear duct and just blend it into the start of whatever colour I'm putting underneath. You can of course just do your tear duct though. But if you look at the difference between the two, to me, this eye looks more finished. I like that. Right. I'm going to pause you one more time while I bung this all over my face, pop some mascara on, pop a lippy on, do something with this hair, and I'll be back for the final look. I'm back. Yeah, I'm just checking there's no lippy on my teeth. Right. Now, you know I used my Ofra Nikki Tutorials Glaze Donut for the highlight. Blush today is the L'Oreal Life's a Peach in shade Peach Addict. I actually used this W7 Hollywood Bronze and Glow for my bronzer today. Um, I really love this. This is the Revolution Renaissance Glow. But they've discontinued doing it. Which is so bloody annoying because that was the perfect, perfect contour shade for me. Uh, so I'm trying to find ones that are similar. This is the closest I've found so far. But as you can see, it's still slightly, slightly warmer than the Renaissance Glow. So if anybody knows of exact dupes for this that is not Charlotte Tilbury prices, do let me know. Um, but as I said, this is a good interim for the minute until I can find one to match that. Um, mascara is Essence Lash Princess in Green False Lash Effect and the lippy is actually a Jouer High Pigment Pearl Lip Gloss with Coconut Oil in shade Ibiza which is Super cute, super tiny, and has two mils more than Jeffrey's Yahoge great one. Let's not go there with the packaging, huh? Hair's gone ridiculously flat today, so it either does 80s or it does 90s grunge. It can't make its mind up. But there we go, there's my final look for this particular photo that my friend Maz took of Norway. What do we think? Did I do the picture justice? I know, I know, regular viewers are like, that is so pale and pastel for you, what's going on? But try and forget the fact that I, I normally have a massive colour everywhere. Uh, and just, you know, how, how have I done at recreating the picture? What do you think? Is it good? Would you do this or would you have done it differently? Let me know in the comments box down below. And now you've watched this one, obviously I have a lot of other films you can watch if you wish, but before you indulge in any more of my films, you do really need to go and watch Anne's film and see exactly how she has interpreted that photo. Will this be the first one where we've done exactly the same look, or will it yet again be a completely different completely different look to what I've done. Who knows? Um, please double check you are still subscribed. 
because YouTube are still unsubscribing people. They are taking the bell off, they are unringing the bell, they are removing the notifications. I don't know what they're playing at right now, but you know, if you're seeing this and you're one of my regulars and it appeared in your news feed, please just double check that uh, you are still subscribed because I've had quite a few this week where it's appeared in my news feed and I've watched it and then as I'm watching it I'm like, hang on a minute, it says I'm not subscribed, what's going on? So, yeah. But there we go folks, this is the end of yet another photo inspiration collaboration. I hope you enjoyed it. As I said, if you're here from Anne's channel, I hope you had fun here. Uh, we're a very friendly bunch, very, very friendly. We chat to each other in the comments, we offer each other advice, we offer each other support. It's a friendly channel. The 4F family is a beautiful family to belong to. <laughs> All right, okay. All that remains for me to say, as ever, is your stay fabulous. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.